Hey guys, I hope things are going well and you're enjoying your summer. I missed you on Wednesday, but I'm excited to get started here again. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about is a little bit of practice on the art of restating the question. Okay, because what I read over last week's assignment, um, the way that you addressed restating the question was awkward a little bit, and so I want to talk to you about that. Um, let's just look at what the question asked. It says, in this passage, Sylv reveals that she and Autumn are in a romantic relationship. Evaluate the relationship between these two characters. Are things going well, or is there a strain in the relationship? Support your answer with evidence from the text. And what a couple of you did is you told me something like this. You said, uh, these characters, no, characters are in a romantic relationship. Okay. Then you said the relationship is not going well. Something like that. Okay. First of all, this is two different sentences. It gives me a, a something that is actually already in the question. Like this idea that they are in a romantic relationship is literally right here. It already says it. So for you to repeat it, that's that's not necessary. Um, it also doesn't. It doesn't really. What we want you to do is we want you to put the the and the question and the answer in the same sentence because the point of you responding to this question is that whomever's asking you to respond they want to know what you think the answer is are you able to analyze the text and answer the question and then are you able to prove that your answer is correct using the evidence okay this is not the most efficient way to do this so i'm just going to get rid of it when i look through here first thing i want to do is i want to um find where the actual question is because sometimes the author will give you additional information at the beginning or they'll ask you to read a section things like that so the actual question are these two sentences here it asks you to evaluate the relationship between these characters it also says are things going well or is there a strain and i feel like that's mostly sort of a question that's trying to help you understand what they mean by evaluate the relationship but let's see, what we're going to do is we're not going to use these kind of words. We're not going to put anything like evaluate. We're not going to say, I evaluated the relationship. We're not going to do that. This is like a question word. We're not going to put the question words in our, in our, in our rewrite. Okay. But the question stem, this part here where it says the relationship between these two characters, that's something that we can reuse that will make sense. Um, uh, and either are things going well or is there a strain? Now, these two things are different. I want to say that there's a strain. Uh, so I'm going to put there's a strain in the relationship. But I'm going to go ahead and highlight that because I'm going to use that section to help me re rewrite and answer this question. I'm restating. Okay. So. Hmm, how could this make sense? I want to say that there's a, a strain in the relationship between these characters. So I'm going to straight up just say that. I'm using things from the question and I'm answering it like this. There is a strain in the relationship between Sylv. So I'm just going to use their names just because I want to but it's who they're talking about. Well, maybe I should, because I can't spell them. <laughs> and Autumn. That's not, that's not her name. Okay. All right. I used this section right here. I used the fact that it's between the two characters. And the answer's there. That is short, sweet, to the point, and it uses what we have already in the question, okay? So uh, let's do some additional practice. Let's just look at what I have. I have, um, uh, sorry, I've got a bunch of questions here and I put answers as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for the question stem and I'm going to use this answer 
to actually answer this question and show what my response would look like. So my question here, how does the author use, oh, sorry, let me just say, these are practice questions. I have not read any of these passages. Um, if you go to read these passages, you're not going to see what I answered because what I answered, I just made them up. Okay, so these answers are just made up stuff. It, none of this is important. All we're going to do is try to write that rad sentence where we restate the question and answer the question in the same sentence. Um, this is just practice for that particular skill. Okay, so this question, how does the author use sound to establish the mood of the story? All right. All right, this right here is my question stem. You could underline it. Sometimes, you know, for me, sometimes maybe underlining it helps. And you don't have to, like, have a highlighter or anything like that. But all right. Um, all right. The author uses sound to establish a spooky mood in the story because and now I'm using I used this stem and now I'm also trying to incorporate the other things from this answer right so all of this right here establish underline it all of this is from my question and the rest that I'm putting here is the answer. See how it kind of, it isn't like I only use restate and then my answer is always behind it because I put part of my answer here in, in the middle of the sentence. The point is to write a sentence that makes the most sense and is the easiest to understand as you're going along. All right, so the author uses sound to establish a spooky mood in the story because the sounds he uses would be frightening if they happened sorry in real life i've got my answer and i've got restating okay that's the first that's r and n and a from rad in one sentence how does music change the way the boy feels Okay, how does, these are our question words, we won't use them. I'm going to use this though. Okay, music changes the way the boy feels uh, because at first he is sad, but the music gives him energy. Right here. There's my question stem. Number three. How does the speaker's changing perception of the setting affect the way the speaker feels over the course of the poem? Oh, that is a lot. Let's see. Um, okay, here is the question stem that I need to try and include. Let me read this answer. She was excited to learn about the history of the building. Uh, but, okay, so, all right. The speaker's changing perception of the setting affected the way the speaker feels. over the course of the poem because at the beginning she was excited to learn about the history of the building but after she learned She was very depressed. That sounds like a weird poem, but that's probably because I made it up. Uh, oops, speaker. Okay. All right. Uh, I want the 
question and answer to be on the same. All right. What does the section commercial fishing reveal about the author's point of view? All right. Hmm. All right. This part right here is my question stem. It doesn't include the question words. Okay. And for this one, the author clearly prefers hunting wild salmon over breeding them. I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to change this up a little bit. The author's point of view in the section commercial fishing. is that people should not hunt wild salmon. So I didn't, in, in these questions up here, I kind of used the question stem in the same order that they, like the words are kind of in the same order. But here I changed the order up of the words because it, it doesn't matter. What it matters is that you get the basic idea of the question in, in the sentence, right? So the author's point of view that is in there. And then the second part where it's talking about the section, that's in there too. It's just in a different section. It's just in a different order from where it was originally written. Okay. And I changed this like this was my answer, but it's made up, doesn't matter. I think that this is a perfectly fine answer. It means kind of the same thing as this. That's what you gotta do. You gotta try and figure out how to make it mean the same thing and have the sentence be like simple, right? You see, even when the answer is long, the question is kind of like the question and the answer, it's kind of simple. That's the point. We want it to be simple and clear. Okay. I'm gonna do just one more. Um, in the article excerpt from something fishy going on, everyone, how does the section Methods of Destruction develop a claim made by the author? All right, that is a lot. All right, this section is part of the text. Um, the fact that it is from the article, you don't really need to put that in your answer, honestly because this is the question. The question starts with the how does here, and this is just telling me what article we're reading in the first place. You don't really need to put that in your answer. A lot of kids will do that, but it's just extra work for you, which you don't need to do, okay? So, um, in the section methods of destruction, Author develops the claim that people should not hunt wild salmon because it destroys the environment. You know what? I don't really like that sentence. I'm going to try and change it and make it a little bit more clear. In this section, uh, Methods of Destruction, the author develops the claim uh, that wild salmon hunting destroys the environment. It's shorter. I think it's a little bit clearer. And when you're writing, you want to revise your work. You want to make sure that what you're writing is just as clear as it can possibly be. Okay, for your assignment, you're going to do this exact same thing. This process that I've been doing, you've got five questions on your own to practice with, okay? As always, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I guess that's it. Okay, thanks guys.